two, copy FN03 here. Roger, 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 roger. Yeah, no worries at all on that signal. That was uh, clear as day, like I said. Roger, 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 roger. Good show. Seven, three. Seven, three. Thanks for the sweep. I'm Mike, N2MAK. It's the June VHF contest, and I'm at Carlton Hill in Western New York. Let's get this park activated on the high bands. So you got all the uh, rocks uh, surrounding the border of the parking lot painted, which is kind of cool. I noticed this in some of the other parking areas. Uh, but what's unfortunate is the mess left behind. You know, clearly a uh, nice fire pit, cool place to uh, hang out, drink. I get it. Been there, done that, but clean up after yourselves. I mean, you got broken glass, uh, garbage recycling. That's not cool. Take care of our parks. All right, let's uh, take a quick look at the setup here. We're just about ready to uh, get on the air. Uh, first of all, and for the first time, I'll be using uh, my new three element six meter Yagi from Momo Beam. I picked this up from HRO at Hamvention. I've used it for a uh, local six meter SSB net uh, just the other week, it worked well, but this is the first time out for uh, POTA and in this case VHF contest with it. Hey everybody, future Mike. You can tell by the, the haircut and the different shirt. Anyway, uh, quick lesson learned, uh, and I'm gonna do a couple of these along the way in the video. I need to find a better way to anchor uh, the tripod here because I had this tripod blow over on me in the January contest when it was really windy and it was windy again now here in June. And guess what? Yeah, the uh, six meter Yagi blew over on me. Fortunately, no damage to the antenna or to my car. Could have been a lot worse. Anyway, back to the video. Over on the other side of the vehicle, we've got uh, two masts. Uh, two drive over masts. First one's the MFJ mast. Um, that's not going all the way up. Neither of them are because uh, it's short runs of coax, but that's the Ed Fong dual band J pole for two meters and 70 centimeters up there. And then this is a Soda Beams tactical mini mast on another drive on mount. That's going up. And what we have there is a roll-up J-pole for 1.25 meters. I can't, I got it off eBay. I can't remember who the seller was. Um, I think it might be Nelson Antennas actually, and they don't make them anymore, but. Uh, coax obviously going into the car. Let me show you what we got going on inside. Okay, so inside we got the ICOM 705 um, and a pretty nice view. It's, as you might've heard, the audio quality outside, it's, it's pretty windy. Um, got my, MacBook Air, we'll use that for uh, logging and running FT8. Um, the coax uh, from the two masts is coming in. One's going to the Yaesu uh, FT4XR. I'll use that for 146.52. Um, and if anyone happens to be doing simplex on 446. Uh, then there's the Alinko uh, DJ296. That's a mono band for 1.25 meters. So I'll be listening to uh, 223.5 FM. And then brand new for me for the first time, um, uh, let's see here is Dave N2OA, I believe. Um, I'll put his call sign <laughs> in, uh, in in the comments down below. But uh, he's let me borrow two HTs, one Cisalinko DJ G7, and I'll be using this one on uh, the 23 centimeters, uh, listening in on one uh, on 1296.1 FM. And then I have one that will do 33 centimeters as well, and this will be listening on 906.5 FM. I think that's the uh, calling frequency as well. I've never operated on those bands, so uh, that's going to be a first for me. Now let's get the uh, radio set up and get on the air. Future Mike, back again. Uh, two other quick lessons I learned uh, in the contest. Um, the first is that, you know, FF, the FM calling frequencies might be in the higher portion of a band, but... A lot of people might be down on the lower portion of the band, and that's because their antennas, if they're using a Yagi, a beam antenna, it may be tuned for the lower portion uh, because they're working CW and sideband or digital modes most of the time. 
So some of the contacts I made on FM were actually on a calling frequency for SSB or down in the lower portion of the band. Uh, the other thing I learned related to that too is that even though uh, people might be operating FM, a lot of them in the contest are doing so with whole or, uh, horizontally polarized antennas. That's because, again, the, the beam that they have set up at their QTH is that way. So uh, when I was using the Yagi for uh, 33 centimeters, a lot of the time I was getting better reception doing it horizontal, even though I was on FM, and that's because that's how other operators had their uh, station set up. Anyway, back to the video. All right, I was going to show a quick look at the SWR uh, with the... Uh Yagi, as you can see, it looks great. It's uh, especially lower in the band where I'll be playing uh, sideband and FT8. Uh, just as I was about to start filming, there we go. The radio is already going off. I um, got my first uh, contact and login to JMH, and I worked them on six bands, um, all the way from six meters up to uh, 1296, uh, which is really cool. So my first contacts on 23 and 33 centimeters already and uh, just getting started. Hey, it's me back again. Real quick, if you're wondering, the 6 meter Yagi, yes, it will work on 52.525. That's the FM calling for you to see for uh, 6 meters. However, SWR is a little bit over 2 to 1. It's not great, but it, it was perfectly manageable just to do a few quick QSOs. And I'm only running 10 watts, so I'm not too worried about any any damages or anything there. But it just kind of goes to show you what I was saying earlier about how those in the contest may have a beam antenna, but they might be constrained to a smaller portion of the band because that's where the antenna is tuned. Also, uh, what's a, an interesting difference, um, speaking of the bands, is in POTA, we're used to getting a pile-up contacts, working one contact after another after another, but we pretty much stay put on the same frequency. It's uh, a lot different in the VHF contest. Often they'll be asking, you get a contact and someone will say, what other bands do you have? And I'll immediately work them on whatever bands I can from the radios and the antennas I have set up. And sometimes that means having to get out of the car so I can operate the HTs on 23 and 33 centimeters and uh, get a better signal. But you know, that's all part of the fun. It's a little chaotic, um, to say the least, but uh, it's, it's a great way to try new and different things and uh, learn a little bit in the process. So anyway, back to the video. All right, just started calling uh, CQ on 6 meter FT8. It's, that's a quick look at the waterfall, um, the, the activity right now on uh, 6 meter FT8. Go get some. N2 MAK, thanks for the contact. 7 3, good luck in the contest. 7 3, you Awesome. Made a few uh, changes to the station real quick. So, this is the Elk dual band log periodic antenna. Um, got that set up. It's not up as high as it could be. The winds have been pretty bad. Actually, the Yagi got blown over. Uh, no damage though. So, uh, fortunately, that's all good. But for six meters now, I just got a uh, vertical on a mag mount. That's the Wolf River Coils 213-inch uh, telescoping whip. So I've worked a few FM contacts on 6 meters. That'll do for now. But I'm switching over to do uh, some FT8 on uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. All right, that'll do it. That was fun, and that was utter chaos at times as well. Um, I am all packed up. I got to run home. I've been out much later than I planned to be, so... Let me get back home, and after I have a chance to uh, process and kind of go through the logs, I'll give uh, my final thoughts. Hey, Future Mike back for the last time. So, a couple uh, takeaways from the contest. I think uh, most importantly, and now that I've definitely had a few days to think about it, i got to make some improvements to my setup. Uh, one is definitely going to be an antenna switch so that I can easily switch between antennas as opposed to having to 
set up a six meter Yagi and then take it down just to put up the uh, elk antenna for uh, two meters and 70 centimeters. So something as simple and inexpensive as an antenna switch is going to come in real handy in the future. Definitely got to find a way to uh, secure the speaker stand that I've used as a tripod since I've had it blow over twice. I've been fortunate to have very high winds <laughs> in the last two uh, contests. So hopefully that's not the case in September. Uh, nonetheless, I will be prepared and make sure that the uh, tripod is secured. And lastly, and, and this is more for everyone else, the VHF contests are a great way to get out, make contacts using some different modes, some different bands, and use those towards uh, achievements and, and awards for other programs like Parks on the Air. I used this contest to uh, get the final contacts that I needed for the six-pack award, both for Hunter and Activator. And getting the six-pack awards was one of my goals for ham radio this year, so I can uh, check that box off now. Ever since I did my first Summits on the Air, which was during a VHF contest, I've looked for ways to uh, combine POTA and SODA uh, with the VHF contest. It's been a fun way to get out, try new modes and bands, and uh, do some different things that I don't typically do during a, a POTA or a SODA activation. It's been a lot of fun and a great way to learn, and I've tried to encourage others to give it a try too. If you got out during the VHF contest and uh, gave the higher bands a shot, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click like and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm Mike, N2MAK73.